All right, hello everybody and welcome back to Star Wars the Card Game here at Fantasy Flight Games World Championship 2015. I'm Mercedes and I work in the graphic design department and handle all of our living card games, including Star Wars. And this is my good buddy, Evan. I also go by Gork occasionally. Uh, I do marketing for many games, including the Star Wars LCG. So. Let them have it. <laughs> all right, well, this is near the end of the Star Wars World Championships. We've got two great players here. We, on the right, we have David Tietze. He'll be playing light side with the Jedi deck. On, uh, on the top, we've got Zach Bunn, owner of Team Covenant, a great supporter of our games and excellent guys. He'll be playing dark side, a Navy Star Destroyers deck. Both players just preparing now, choosing starting objectives, drawing their hands. And there's the handshake. They are off. The winner of this game will go on to face Tom Malucci in the finals. The loser will hold third place. And for those of you who aren't necessarily familiar with the game, we have an awesome game with Star Wars because we are struggling to get the good side, the light side of the force, to oppose the dark side of the force, who is trying to build this wicked little Death Star. And as soon as that Death Star dial gets up to 12, that would be the win condition for the dark side player. Meanwhile, the light side player is trying to destroy three of the dark side's objectives to foil their plans. As soon as they do that, they've got this game. Here we go. All right, so Zach's starting us off. Uh, objectives here, Zach's got to deploy the fleet to lower the cost of his uh, capital ships. He's got Imperial Blockade, which is going to raise the cost of David's units. And he's got Might of the Empire, which gives his capital ships elite. So he's got a bunch of uh, guys in play, or, or in his hand, rather. He's playing the Fleet Navigator, just a little guy with a resource and a tactics. Over on David's side of the objectives, we've got heroes that lets him draw a card when a force user enters play flight of the crow gives edge one to his unique jedi units and mysteries of the rim you can move a focus token from that to a unique jedi unit all right tarkin's hitting the board there's the dp20 uh Corellian gunship or some such i don't know Th lots of numbers and letters it's hard to remember and taking the force with tarkin swift movement from the first turn here yep Tarkin's an excellent uh, asset for the dark side. He, you can spend a navy resource to blank the text of any uh, card or enhancement, I believe, is how it works. I'll look that up real quick. All right, getting some extra resources here. Any, any card, actually. A target card's printed text box. There you go. No. Yoda. There is Yoda. Hitting the board. And it looks like a Valley of the Jedi came before that. And he's paying one extra for that per Imperial Blockade. Now this is classic Jedi uh, for the most part. We've got, uh, he's God, may the force be with you. He's running Luke, he's running the core set Obi-Wan, which is uh, not one that many people, most people choose the balance of the force Obi-Wan, but obviously it's been doing well for David today. He's just gonna take the force and pass the turn back over to Zach. So Zach is refreshing right here. Looks like he spent a resource to blank the text of Valley of the Jedi, which is fine because he gets that to refresh that immediately. All right, looks like he's drawn up. Looks like he didn't draw any units, but that might be okay. So he's got, oh, he does have one. He has 49 Decimator, a great little defender guy. He's got Customs Blockade, which can be especially crucial when you're playing against a Jedi deck that has lots of events. The way Customs Blockade works is you put two focus tokens on it when an event is played, uh, an enemy event, and it cancels its effects. Seems pretty effective. <laughs> Truly. <laughs> He's got Death Squadron Command, gives three resources, and you remove a focus token whenever an objective is destroyed, which hopefully will be seen a lot of, no matter which side is doing it. All right, dropping Death Squadron Command, three resources. There's the VT-49 Decimator. And he's giving it an Ion Cannon, which gives it a black Tactics Icon. Tactics yeah. going to be crucial to uh, control these Jedi more than they control you. Tricky Jedi. Yeah. All right, looks like he's holding there. Uh, no conflicts. He's committing his guys to the Force and taking the, dark si taking the Force back to the dark side. David refreshing. Looks like we've got the dial at two right now. No damage has been yet been done other than the damage that Zach did to his own deploy the fleet.
Yes, uh, some of the chat stream are wondering if Valley of the Jedi was blanked by Tarkin, and it was, in fact. Uh, he spent the resource that was on Tarkin to blank its effect and then immediately uh, took it off in his refresh phase, which followed shortly after, um, which is crucial for keeping that resource locked down. All right, Forgotten Master coming out. That unit's automatically committed to the Force. Uh, Zach has the option to spend a resource to put it back in his hand, but he's not going to do that. Spending two resources for that per Imperial blockade. Leaving him with only two open resources. I, I really like using Tarkin to blank the effect of value of the Jedi. That's a nice form of a resource lock that you can kind of push the Jedi into. Seems like a strong, strong move. Yep. Let's see what else does he have in his hand. He has, looks like a, a Ruzan colonist. Not the best unit. Uh, it uh, one committed to the force. It adds its force icons to edge battles, but it doesn't really do much else. Um, he might have the Moldy Crow. Moldy Crow is really good if you can slip it in unopposed. The problem is uh, all of its stuff is edge enabled. All right, so he's playing the Ruzan Colonist. A nice little shot out there. We got a reader. And that is all of David's resources. So we'll see what happens when we move to combat. Mm. It's always fun when you're trying to see what the, when they're deciding what they're going to do. Right, right. Can't quite see it on the screen, but I imagine him over there biting his nails before he <laughs> figures out exactly what he's going to do here. Looks like we're blanking some text. Uh, probably Valley of the Jedi. Or maybe not. I'm not sure exactly. It must have been Valley of the Jedi. Yep. So Force goes back to the light side, and uh, Dial goes up to three. Zach refreshing his stuff. Zach probably imagining uh, when he's going to start going on the offensive. Right now he has Moment of Triumph in hand, which could be interesting. That destroys all two cost and lower units, which would get rid of the VT-49 and the Fleet Navigator, also the Rusin Colonist and the Lost Master on David's side. Probably not the best play right now, but maybe he wants to save it in hand for uh, future struggles. He looks like he's got Tractor Beam in hand. That's a great card. Yeah. So that Death Star sitting at three, or Death Star dial sitting there at three, and we're still waiting to see if the light side's gonna get much damage going over there on those objectives. It looks like we have two so far, mm -hmm. and uh, he's got to completely destroy three of them in order to win this game. That is correct. No engagements yet on David's side. He's kind of doing what the Jedi do. They just kind of sit back and wait, bide their time, you know, grow strong with the Force, and... Uh, <laughs> and then come destroy your Death Star. Yep, that's exactly what they do. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta take away your toys. Those Jedi. I tell you. Pesky Jedi. <laughs> Zach thinking really hard about his deployment here. That's quite the fancy watch he has. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, it's great. Shows me what time it is. Keep track <laughs> of all this. <laughs> well, I mean, it doesn't show us what time it is because he's wearing it, but, you know. I don't know. Every now and then he flicks his wrist and it's like, hey. Oh. <laughs> You must have sharper eyes than I if you can read that. Oh, yeah. My eyes are sharp. Razor sharp. Eagle eye opheim. That's what we call you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Customs blockade to cancel events. VT-49 decimator coming in, ready to strike. Dealing another damage to deploy the fleet to pull out the another uh, Corellian dropship or whatever those things are called. He's got quite a bit going on on his board. Yeah, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff out there. Those Corellian gunships are uh, excellent because they give a lot of shields. Zach is also running the uh, the Sabotage in the Snow set, which includes a car called Forward Command Post that g adds blast damage to your shielded units. And that can be very, very helpful when you have a lot of units that get shielding. It can let you destroy the, the light side's objectives very quickly. <laughs> so we'll see if he wants to attack at all. There was a comment in the chat saying, good luck getting through that fleet. I'm <laughs> starting to agree. No kidding. Yeah. All right. Looks like the gunship is coming in. Uh, he's going to shield some things. Yep. He's attacking Flight of the Crow.
wants to get rid of those. Um, yep. So just the gunship coming in. The Lost Master will defend. And we have an edge battle on our hands, ladies and gentlemen. Ooh. <laughs> they're thinking pretty hard about what they're going to put in there. All right, looks like uh, they both just passed on the chance to edge battle. So Lost Master is uh, dealing one, and the Corellian gunship is uh, dealing one back. Just a little poke there. Dark side poking out at the light side, <laughs> seeing how it reacts. He's got a lot of units committed to the force over there on that Imperial Navy side of the board. It does indeed. So, I'm, I mean, obviously his tactic here is to try to keep the force with him for as long as he can to get that Death Star dial up as fast as he can. Right, right. So he just pulled a, a focus token off of the uh, Mysteries of the Rim objective and on to uh, the Lost Master. Could be he's uh, playing some kind of event. Looks like he has our most desperate hour, but Customs Blockade is going to cancel the first event. So if he wants to get an event through, David is going to have to play two events, one that he doesn't care about and another one that he actually wants to have take effect. What are they going to do? I can't <laughs> take it. All right. Hmm. All right, looks like they just uh, finished the turn there. Uh, one focus token came off of Valley of the Jedi. And one damage going on to Might of the Empire from the Balance of the Force being with David. Hey. Refreshing his like stuff there. That Lost Master is still locked down. Hmm. And we'll see what he does with what he has in hand. Yeah, he has our most desperate hour, shields a unit. Uh, looks like he has Obi-Wan Kenobi. Yep, so he's playing our most desperate hour right now. It's get, it gets canceled, freeing the way for another event if uh, David wants to play it. Yep, he's got Obi-Wan Kenobi in hand. He's got a Twi'lek Loyalist and uh, an Outer Rim Mystic. Absorb focus tokens for other guys. That could prove useful. It could. Uh, Zach's deck is not so big on the tactics, though. I feel like that Outer Rim Mystic is uh, kind of playing a game that the dark side isn't playing. If he would, <laughs> if he were to play him out, he, you know, he can always just edge him if he wants to. Oh. So, ah, uh, but he is playing him. It is always handy to protect from uh, any kind of tactics. Got three resources. Draws a card, and he only has three resources left. Hmm. That Imperial Blockade is doing a lot of work. Increasing the cost of the first unit he has to play every turn. Putting some more resources into play there. Yep. Dagobah Training Grounds. Zach kind of playing the waiting game here, wanting to uh, sit back and let the Death Star Dial increase a little bit more before he uh, goes on the offensive. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> I mean, unless you're David. <laughs> <laughs> tough decisions, tough decisions. Yeah, I mean, this you don't want to make a mistake here. These are untimed finals. There's no time limit going here. Uh, players can take as long as they need to. What's he gonna do? Sorry, I'm bouncing around in yeah, here. Yeah, he's got three resources open. <clears throat> a lot of hard thinking. One of the one of the things that can make a difference here is that David is going into this game a little bit cold. He's been he's been sitting out for a couple of rounds. You know, he fought his way up to this position, and then he had to wait for the losers bracket to resolve. Whereas Zach is coming just minutes after his last victory. He is in the zone. 100%, whereas David uh, might have to think a little bit to, to get back into it. Absolutely. I suppose that's what happens when you go after starships with, with Jedi. Yeah, you, you have to think a little <laughs> bit about how you're going to do that. 
not easy. Tension is thick. All and right. There goes Yoda. Here we have an attack. Yoda's going out. And he is going to play Force Invisibility, I think is what it's called. Basically, it lets you uh, choose a number of units equal to the number of focus targets on one of your units. Those units can't defend. So he's choosing the, 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 the gunship there. And he's going to choose one more. Yep, the Decimator with the tactics. So neither of those units will be able to defend. And he's attacking Deploy the Fleet. Going to try and shut that off. It's been doing a lot of damage. So Zach here gets in, get in to uh, decide how he wants to defend with his remaining characters. Both of these guys are nice and patient. Yeah. Yep. Reading the text. Mm -hmm. All right. Yep. So he's getting the unopposed damage to uh, turn that off. So he will no longer have to pay that additional resource tax when he deploys units. All right, well, I mean, you know, having damage on all three of uh, the Imperial Navy objectives is definitely a good start for David. Mm -hmm. Dial ticks up to four. Yeah, I think that, you know, David has made a couple probing attacks. Zach's done damage himself to deploy the fleet to lower the cost of his capital ships. He's got quite the impressive board here, Zach does. He has a lot of resources open. Death Star com or Death Squadron Command just cleared up. So he's got a total of, I believe, eight, eight resources? Yeah. I think he has eight resources open right now. So he can play that pretty much whatever he wants. That's quite a bit. Yep. Looking at cards in hand, deciding if he wants to keep any, if he wants to chuck some. Mm, looks like that blockade's gonna be a challenge. Yeah. All right, drawing some more. Draws into Admiral's Orders, which can lower the cost of a capital ship by two. That might be useful if he's gonna get out that Death Squadron Star Destroyer that he's got in his hand. He's got a Rule by Fear. Rule by fear: When you, uh, when a light side unit enters play, you can uh, immediately or sacrifice it to return it to your opponent's hand, which can be quite useful for doing that kind of resource choke thing that we were talking about. Zach laying some cards down, using counters, planning out his whole turn before he plays anything. Wow, sure beats my strategy of trying to do it in my head and then just confusing myself. <laughs> it's not easy, to, I mean, not difficult, I should say, to do in my case, as I just proved. Right, I mean, you're playing a lot of stuff, you're reducing things, you're, you're, uh, you're playing things that play off of other things. You, you want to make sure that you don't play out half of it and then end up one resource short. Mm -hmm. That is the last thing you want to have happen. Yep. It's a lot of modifiers to keep track of. All right, so he's playing Admiral's Orders, dealing one damage to deploy the fleet. Oh, there's that big ship. Yep, so that is the Death Squadron Star Destroyer. It's just got a ton of blast damage. It's got shielding. It's immune to your opponent's events. It can make short work of those light side objectives, for sure. Three more resources. Takes uh, wow. is ruled by fear, which can be uh, integral to a uh, bouncing uh, any kind of unit that comes in back into play. You know, we saw Obi-Wan in David's hand. Those units he might be thinking he wants to play now that he uh, got rid of Imperial Blockade or turned it off. He'll now have to think twice about. Importantly, Zach does have the resources open to play for Tractor Beam. So he could, if he wanted to, uh, Tractor Beam is uh, 
Death Squadron Star Destroyer focus token from attacking over to another ship, strike twice, destroy an objective, or he might do it outside of the combat phase and just put a ton of damage on two different objectives. We'll see. All right, well, here he goes. Yeah, first engagement. So we're getting shields on the board, shielding on uh, Tarkin and on the gunship. Attacking Forgotten Heroes. Going to edge battle here, defending with the Ruzan colonist. All right, just got one on each side. That's fine. Zach wasn't really planning to uh, destroy anything with this attack. He's got a black tactics from that ion cannon, so he uh, he'll be able to play that no matter what. Yep, putting that tactics right on Yoda, mm -hmm. moving it over to the Forgotten Rooms Mystic. Yep, and he's destroying the Rusin colonists there. I guess, uh, and getting his one damage run opposed in there. Getting some clarification on uh, what it says on the Outer Rim Mystic. I like how Tarkin's kind of sitting back in the center of this <laughs> huge fleet of uh, ships, you know, just like in uh, in the movies, I imagine. Right, <laughs> quite thematic. Yeah, he's the admiral, fleet admiral coming in, one damage play the crow, and that all important tactics on Yoda. <laughs> just waiting to just construct this technological terror. Yep, Death Squadron Star Destroyer. It's going to be four damage to. Uh, the mysteries of the rim. So Zach doing a great job of kind of spreading the damage around. In the force phase, he's got five to zero, so he's gonna be taking the force back. No free damage from David. And refreshing. Once more, David has a ton of units, but Rule by Fear is in play, and that is going to make things difficult if he wants to play someone huge like uh, like Luke or something. Yeah, I mean, he's going to have to get some more some more units out there while these other guys are, you know, tactics out and not able to, to, to act. Exhausted. That is, that is definitely true. Oh, so he is playing Tarasa, uh, a Jedi Force user. So she has a large spread of combat icons. She's got unit damage, blast damage, tactics, the whole shebang. Oh, and Zach wow. is using Rule by Fear to return her to the hand. Oh, no. Yep. I mean, he saw it coming. That uh, was expensive. It was on the board. Yeah. David knew he had to get rid of it. He's going to replay <laughs> her. Yep. Four resources. Still his best option. And her ability is, well, she gains edge two while he has the most units committed to the force. So right now, both players have three units committed to the force. That lost master there counts as committed to the force, even without a force card. Oh. So no edge two for Tarasa. Unless, so he also has in his hand uh, a gift from the past. That's a zero cost event. It lets you... Oh, no, I'm sorry. That removes the target unit you control from the force. So that would not help. No, I think Tarasa is out of luck with regards to edge, at least for this round. All right. So we go straight through conflict and straight through the force. 
the dial ticks right up to six. Refreshing. Halfway there. Yep, yeah, refreshing units here. Yoda and the Lost Master still under waves of tactics tokens. Zach looking at his hand, deciding what he wants to uh, hold on to. He's probably holding on to that tractor beam to uh, give him a quick unexpected win. Discarding moment of triumph. I think that's the right call. It would do as much damage or more to your own board at this point. So he's got a raider. That's going to be good. That unit can pop in and out as defender. Another decimator. He has quite the fleet right now. Yes, he does. <laughs> Tarkin and his fleet. Goodness gracious. What are you going to do when you got so many ways to bring the pain? <laughs> Lots of thinking on both players' sides. You don't want to make a mistake at this stage of the game. This is, after all, the World Championships, as we all know. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Lots mm. of thinking. Speaking of thinking, what do you think David's thinking right now? I think David is thinking... I need a way to get through this fleet. <laughs> now. There's that sledgehammer when you need it. Important to note, there is a sledgehammer of sorts in David's deck. He has Do a card tell. called, what is it called? Uh, I think it's called, um, I have no idea what it's called. It's an <laughs> event. And uh, what it does is after you win a four struggle, you can destroy all units not committed to the fours. Wow. So, I mean, Zach has three units committed to the force. Tarkin it probably is most important, and then those two others. But if David can play that card, he would be able to wipe a large portion of Zach's board just right off. That could be brutal. It could be brutal. It takes a lot. It, it's uh, three resources to play. I still can't remember its name. It's May the Force. No, it's not May the Force be with you. It's... It's something about the force. I wish I could help you. The power of the force <laughs> is in this card. Yeah. Anyways, it's a board wipe of sorts. That could definitely be useful for David right now. Yeah. Yep. So I'm thinking David is not going to hang all of his hopes on that, but uh, he's got to be thinking about it right now. But for now, that is quite the fleet that there is out there. We've got three VT-49 decimators. We've got the Raider fleet staging area. We have just have it from the stream that the card is called My Ally is the Force. Thank you, loyal stream viewers. <laughs> You've got my back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, so going into attack here. Possibly. I think it's the decimator and the fleet navigator. Uh, OK. Oh, OK, so this is. All right, so he is blanking the Forgotten Master, or no, the Outer Rim Mystic. That's what its name is. Blanking the Outer Rim Mystic. He won't be able to suck focus tokens over. Oop. And that whole big group is going off against ability. Mysteries of the Rim. Triggers ability. So shielding going on the units. Shield being the Death Squad and Star Destroyer. In case things go south, he still wants to have that thing ready and able to attack. And he's on the offense. He's going to try yeah. and use those tactics, keep Yoda down. He's defending with Tarasa. 
If he loses the edge here, this will definitely go poorly for her. She's probably going to bite it. He does have a lot of edge cards in hand. We'll see what he got. Oh, he just put in one. So seeds of decay. That lets him uh, focus a unit committed to the force. So Tarkin is shielded. Not super useful there. But uh, you could get that. Uh, all of Tarasa's many combat icons are turned on. So she'll be able to uh, do some damage Cause there. Some trouble. Yeah. She could kill the fleet navigator and focus Tarkin if she wanted to. Or she'll probably kill the, the gunship, I guess. Gunship? Yep, oh, there it is. Come on. Yep. All right. Bye bye, gunship. Yep, focusing Tarkin there. And the decimator's just got to do one damage. It's a powerful to lady being able to take down a gunship all by herself. Oh, yeah, she is strong in the force, for sure. Yep. Now you're focusing in for nothing. Now, here's the thing that's so great about Zach's board right now. He just had that attack go south, quote unquote. You know, he didn't win the edge. He, mm -hmm. uh, he didn't destroy the objective or anything. And now he has still has so many ships left that he can use to attack and destroy other things. Absolutely. The Death Squadron Star Destroyer can blow up an objective with the help of uh, a buddy to take care of the Outer Rim Mystic. All right. There he goes. Going off against Flight of the Crow. Boom. We'll see if uh, David see. wants to defend. He can defend if he wants to, but that would leave his Outer Rim Mystic totally uh, snowed under. Mm -hmm. But if he doesn't, that objective is toast. So he's defending. Is. I think that's the right call here. Uh, All right. So he is playing uh, Gift from the Past, and it's being canceled by Customs Blockade. One damage over the Death Squadron Star Destroyer, a big old three damage on Ouch. Flight of the Crow. Yep. Kablooey. All right, lots of, uh, lots of objectives very close to dead. The dial is at six now. We are definitely within territory of a one-turn win by destroying all three objectives. There's David refreshing his board. Yep. Still got a couple guys that just can't quite get back up for battle yet. That is true. But his most important, or his most powerful users at least, are uh, are ready. Tarasa and Yoda, both uh, both ready for action. So we'll see what David's drawing. He's got a dig of a training ground for some more resources. Got to get from the past, Obi-Wan Kenobi. There's Obi-Wan hitting the board. Obi-Wan forces your opponent to play the first card in the edge battle face up, up. if he's participating. Yep. Yeah, yep. Quite irritating. <laughs> Especially if you're trying to be sneaky. And yeah, if you've got a twist or something, you've got a delay if you're trying to hide it. And yeah. my favorite thing about his face being on the Twist of Fate card as well. <laughs> <laughs> somebody thought about that. Yep. Thinking it Was through. that somebody you? No. no. Oh, no. okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that would be our awesome art department, I'm sure. <laughs> all right. David thinking through his options here. He's got all of his resources spent. Obi-Wan is resource expensive. Yes, he So is. we've got three three big Jedi names facing off against the might of the Empire. No objectives have been destroyed right now. Dial is at six. So Zach is 50% of the way to victory, and more than that if you take into account the, uh, the damage that has been done to those objectives.
looks like the game could go either way still. Yeah, uh, Zach does not have too many ready defenders. Uh, David is David is dealing with the, uh, the, the plague of the Jedi, which is they don't have a ton of blast. He's got one on the board with Yoda, one with Obi-Wan, uh, and two, two with Tarasa. So he's just going straight to force. He's going to commit Obi-Wan uh, and take the force that way. So the, the dial, Star dial. Yep, up to seven, just passing the turn. This is a, uh, yeah, this is a tough spot for David. He's got uh, a few tactics heavy units, which are going to be crucial for defending against uh, against the tide of the Imperial Navy. <laughs> I'm just here for the sound effects, don't mind me. Yeah. <laughs> Drawn up here. Ooh, he's got a forward command post. Nodding as he sees that. That'll give him extra blast damage. He's got a tractor beam, uh, which he can use to uh, unfocus a unit that perhaps gets tactics by uh, one of those Jedi. He's got a bunch of resources open. Six, I believe. All right. They're still thinking hard about all this. What you gonna do? And speaking so poorly. So many decisions to make. Yeah, it's uh so many things to take into consideration. It's one of the things that makes this game so robust. Yeah, Star Wars has one of the, the highest variables of any uh combat system in a card game. I mean, you've got so many units, and they can all attack and defend, and they all have different combat icons. All right, forward command post hitting the board. That provides shielded units with an extra blast damage. And it gives you a resource, which is never bad. All right, he's doing a damage there. He is blowing up his own deploy the fleet, playing towards uh, David's victory condition, and that is a sure sign that Zach feels confident in this victory. <laughs> Gets David a third of the way to victory, but yep. he doesn't. Yep. <laughs> doesn't he, Zach doesn't seem worried. Yeah, he's just bringing him right there. Uh, spending the resources, dropping another Death Squadron Star Destroyer. Oh, I don't know. If I were in David's position, I'd be, I'd be sweating it. I mean, the Jedi are, are strong board. with the Force, but I mean, Star Destroyers, man. They're Star big and destroyers. triangular and <laughs> lots of guns. It'll hurt really hard if they ram into you. It would hurt really hard. <laughs> <laughs> be terrible. <laughs> I don't think I'd survive it. <laughs> <laughs> Truly. I think it would hurt more of the VT-49 Decimator, though. It's got those two prongs, kind of, like two ships or two triangles. I don't know. <laughs> that would suck more. If we're talking about which ship would... Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of things that you can hypothesize you about, know, I suppose. Yeah. I mean, you know, they're so worried about building this Death Star. They talk about what happens to Earth if it gets hit by meteors. You just drop a Death Star on a planet <laughs> and probably, or I mean, I'm sorry, drop one of these Star Destroyers on a planet and yeah. it would destroy the planet, just, not just the Just full star. speed. That's probably happened in Star Wars somewhere. I'm sure it has. Yeah. Right? Anyways. All right, so Zach is uh, considering his options. Looks like he's out of resources at this point, so he's... Uh, <laughs> Thinking about combat, if he destroys all three objectives, he's got the game here. The problem is getting through all of those tactics that the dark side has. I'm not sure how many cards uh, David has in his hand. He's got uh, got them kind of hidden down there. All right. Here we go. First engagement. Death Squadron Star Destroyer coming in at uh, Forgotten Heroes. So that has four objective damage. It's going to be able to destroy it all by itself. Oh, and, the, and the Decimator, too, coming in. Defending with all of them. Yep, that's 100% what you have to do. If you can win the edge here, you might be able to stop the assault and shut down this swarm of uh, Navy ships that is coming for you. That's right, because of all of those edge-enabled tactics icons, correct? That is correct. All right, first card face up. There's two for the edge. 
Now Obi-Wan in action. Yep. Now David currently has edge two because of Tarasa. All right. Getting some talking here. So he's got edge two going into this. Oh, he has a hand that's full of edge icons. This is a. Uh, oh, look yep. at that. Yeah, so this is almost definitely going in uh, David's favor as far as tactics are concerned, um, or winning the edge, rather. All right. Ooh. So he has it with just Obi Wan and the edge two. So. He is going to be able to strike now and uh, go. put down a lot of tactics. The Time to uh, distract some people. Yep. So Yoda is just taking out that Death Squadron Star Destroyer. Go right Yoda! Right in the face. Spry little guy. Yeah. I would love to see the movie of how he did that. <laughs> All right. Focus on the gunship there. He's going to do one damage to Tarasa. And now the other guys are going to be able to drop their tactics down. So let's see, they got three more tactics. He can shut down the Star Destroyer, Tarkin, the Raider. Yeah, so winning the edge there, David has pretty much stalled uh, Zach's attack for this turn. Yeah, looks like he might have curbed the onslaught just a little bit. Yep. So he's focusing Tarkin and their other shielding thing. That's a good point. Yep. Checking out the shielding. Zach's gonna be able to take two objectives home. Am I gonna keep going? Uh yes. After that engagement? Almost guaranteed. And he's gonna get the tactics he needs to drop down on those uh on those guys and, and keep them locked down. Yep. Elite will not help them now. Yep. So that should get the dial up to 10. No. Yeah, 10. Math. <laughs> Math is hard. If he chooses to attack. He that's might choose to defend. And in, in fact, that's probably the better option because. I'm here at the middle objective. All right. So he's going at the middle objective with a fleet navigator. No Wants to try and. Uh, Use those tactics wherever he can. Taking out the middle objective, getting it up to eight. We'll see where he puts the tactics. It doesn't really matter because it's going on to the Mystic no matter what. And we'll see if he wants to declare another engagement. He's At this got, point, it would be undefended, so. Yeah, he could blow up that last objective and drop an arrow tactics with that VT-49 decimator he's got towards the back there. Or, no, that guy's focused. Never mind. Sometimes the tokens blend in. Go ahead. Yep, so he's passing the turn. Hey, Mike. Hey, what? Mike. All right. Doing one damage to Might of the Empire. And David refreshes. Be curious to see what his new objective is. Yes, indeed. If there was ever a window of opportunity, this is it. David mm -hmm. uh, does not have much time left in the game. So the new objective. Ah, the Forgotten Masters. So that uh, changes the force, the balance of the force based on the outcome of each edge battle. Which uh, can be quite, uh, quite interesting. All right, looking at his hand here. He does have Luke in hand. Should be crucial for getting additional blast damage. Discards to draw. Jedi mind trick, unfortunately not much use against Zack's board only works on characters and creatures. Our most desperate hour to shield these guys. There right. we go. There's Luke on the board. 
little hope in that green lightsaber. Yeah. So he needs to destroy both of these objectives to win. Let's see. He's got a fair amount of blast damage. Yeah. We'll just see if he can push it through. Zach's board is uh, pretty exhausted right now. Yep. He's just got a raider and a decimator. It is getting close. <laughs> the tension is high. Yep. Everybody is waiting with desperate anticipation to see how this is going to play out. Yep. Yep. <laughs> David moves to combat. He's attacking with uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi and Luke Skywalker. Going at Might of the Empire. And he's got to defend this. If he doesn't defend it, the... Uh, his, both of his guys will be focused, and uh, the last attacks will go unopposed. Ouch. Or nope, maybe he's taking it back. He might have just uh, rewound that attack. Think, think every, everything through. Things do look grim for Zach right now. David got the blast damage and uh, and the tactics. Both of these guys thinking hard. There's a lot of decisions to be made. And the result of this match is going to be very important for both of them. No room for mistakes. All right. Moving his guys around. An important thing to note, as many of our friends in the chat are pointing out, is that David has forgotten to draw a couple of times from Forgotten Heroes. Uh, several times he's played Force users and not drawn the card, which can prove quite crucial here when every blast damage is necessary. It'll be really interesting if he manages to pull off the win in spite of that fact. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think he's got a shot for sure. He's got a lot of blast damage. He's got a lot of tactics. Zach thinking, thinking hard as well. Hmm. This just kind of goes to show how the Jedi can really slow a game down, <laughs> grind it out, just wait until they have the advantage, and then they can strike. Dismay on Zach's face is, is pretty telling right now. Yeah, he's uh, got to be wondering, knowing he has to win the edge and knowing that he probably doesn't have the force icons in hand to do it. Like how David keeps looking up, trying to read his opponent. Yep. Oh, there he is, declaring. Yep. And shielding the objective. Exactly what you want. Got to make that as hard to kill as possible. And going to edge. Four in the edge on David's side. Three on Zach's side. And that's the game. Oh. David claims victory. Wow. In that. that was pretty intense. You know, and that actually um, that brings up a good point that uh, somebody in the chat just made is can you think of any reason why David would have been intentionally not drawing those cards? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Figured it was worth asking. Yeah. No, it's, it's, he's been playing for a long time. They've been playing a lot of rounds, and he also just had a break. So 
it, it happens. Triggers are missed uh, in tournament games, but you know, it didn't stop him this time. He pulled out the win in spite of it, and he is going to be going on to face Tom Malucci in the final match, which wow. we will have right here shortly. <laughs> yes, uh, congratulations to David. Yes, and, and, and congratulations to Zach for making it to third place in the World Championships. Excellent, excellent job. That was a phenomenal game, and honestly, I thought it could have gone either way there for a minute. But yep. uh, we are very glad that you all decided to join us yes. for this um, most recent round of Star Wars, the card game here at the Fantasy Flight Games World Championship for 2015. It'd be so lonely without you guys. Absolutely. And that being said, we're going to take a break right now, but we want you to come back and watch the final match with us. All right. We will be back shortly. Thank you. <laughs> 